Hi, this paper is on a workflow analysis of context-driven conversational recommendation. I'm Scott Sanner. My co-authors are Zoe, Arpit, and Rita. So let's look at searching for a restaurant in 2021. I say, hey, hey, assistant, I'd like a nice vegan restaurant. The system says, okay, how about, how about Saigon Lotus? I realize it's not in the right place, and I say, okay, can you give me a restaurant in West Rouge instead? And the system says, Sure, here's some great cream barbecue. Now, I'm sure this is a great cream barbecue place, but unfortunately, I said in the first step that I was vegan, right? We've all had this, we've all had this experience with our assistants that they forget the context of the conversation within the second or third turn. So here's what I think a natural recommendation conversation could be, right? Again, I say, hey, hey, assistant, I'd like a nice vegan restaurant. The system says, now, okay, how about a, a velo? Now again, it's not in the right place, so I say, oh, can you can you give me a restaurant in West Rouge instead? The system says, sorry, I cannot find a local vegan restaurant, but Thai Express has vegetarian options. And I say, okay, that could work. Does it have a nice ambiance? The system says, actually, I'm not sure, but if you don't mind driving 15 more minutes, reviewers say that the vegan restaurant in Fresh has a great atmosphere. Right? Now, what's interesting? What's interesting about this conversation? First of all, it's more personalized my preferences. Right. Secondly. Um, it actually memorizes uh, or keeps keeps the context of memory. Right? In fact, that I said I wanted a vegan restaurant. Um, it qualifies the explanation, explanation with respect to uncertainty over what I want. So I said vegan, and it's not sure whether whether vegetarian uh, will suffice, and so it chooses to use that in its explanation intentionally. Uh, it notes that my question right does it have nice. Uh, uh, Ambiance is actually also preference, right? And it takes that preference into account in making this final recommendation. And again, I said nice ambiance. Uh, the review apparently said great atmosphere. And again, the system chooses this in, in, the, in the explanation with the uh, intent to uh, gain my critique if I don't like what's been provided. Right? So that's what a natural conversation could be, right? And so. We want to ask in this paper, what does make a natural recommendation conversation? I mean, ultimately, we want to inform how we're going to build automated systems, uh, but let's first understand what a good recommendation uh, conversation is to a human. Right? And so the question here is, what are the stages, the types of the interaction, the general workflow when observing, when observing humans talking to other humans about recommendation? Right? Now, there's been a lot of work in this area. I can't possibly covered all in this talk. Uh, I just want to mention that we're largely building on the work of Kai and Chen, uh, work at Rexus 19 and UMAP 20. Uh, they defined a lovely intent, a uh, lovely taxonomy of intents and recommended actions that we build on. Uh, now they perform their analysis on this movie recommendation dialogue set redial. Uh, we're focusing instead on restaurant rec recommendation and a very context-driven setting. So for example, we'll tell the user, you should look for a restaurant for family brunch on the weekend with your young child, parents, and spouse. And the reason we provide this context is we want to lead to strong preferences and constraints that are going to drive the conversation more so than a non-contextual setting. Right. And again, our key aim is to study human-human conversations and understand what's a natural workflow for a human recommendation conversation. Okay. As I said, we build on the user intent taxonomy of Kai and Chen. Um, here it is. I won't go over it in detail, but I'll quickly mention what the user can do. They can ask for a recommendation. They can provide preferences. They can answer a question that the system asks. They can provide acknowledgement of uh, what, the, what the system just said. They can provide feedback or rating on a recommendation. Uh, they can inquire, make a question. Uh, they can critique a recommendation. Now, we have uh, added some new codes or refined. And those are given by the cross. I'll let you read the paper for those details. So those were the user intents. Now the recommender also has actions, right? The kind also have a nice taxonomy here. And again, very briefly, the, the recommender can uh, request information from request information from the user, inform the user of progress, or acknowledge the user's last utterance. They can answer questions the users ask, they can make a recommendation, they can make an explanation for which there are a number of subdivisions of how they can choose to explain. For example, they may choose prior experience as part of the explanation. Okay. And again, 
uh, we've added new codes or refined uh, the codes of Kain Chen as we indicate by the cross. We have to leave you to read the paper to look at those details. Okay, now let's get into our user study and statistics. So we had 12 dialogues with 24, particip 24 participants. Uh, one user was a the seeker, they were, pro they were provided with the context, uh, and one user was the, rec was the recommender. Uh, they did not know the context, they had to elicit that from the seeker. Uh, on average, each transcript had about 1,150 word tokens and about 30 turns, although in practice that ranged from about 130 turns down to 25. And on average, there were 38 words per turn, but looking at the balance between the user and the recommender, right, the recommender actually did more of the talking in the conversation overall. Now, we cannot release the transcripts from these experiments due to the user protocol that was approved. Uh, however, we have uh, released the coded turns, uh, and you can see the paper for that link. Okay, now when we ran our user study, we observed really three distinct stages of the workflow in the conversation. And this drove our analysis that we're gonna to get to in a minute. So in stage one, you start off, there are zero recommendations, right? And the user is providing preferences and the system is helping the user refine those preferences or trying to understand uh, what those user preferences mean, right? At some point, the system, right, thinks it has enough information and makes a recommendation of a first item. And that takes us to stage two, where we have one recommendation. In this stage, now that we have a, rec a recommendation, the conversation flow shifts from purpose elicitation refinement now to inquiry critiquing about that recommendation. The user wants to know details about the recommendation, and it will and the user will critique that recommendation if they don't like it. Right? Uh, if the user and system are happy with the recommendation, they might just choose to resolve the conversation. Otherwise, the second item will be recommended. Right, and now there's still inquiry and critiquing going on, but now because we have two items that have been recommended, we can now also compare them. And you also see that going on in the conversation, right? So this is stage three, when you have two or more recommendations, system can continue to make, can continue to make recommendations, uh, which we say just stays in stage three, or the system the user may choose to resolve the conversation. So again, there are three stages. The first stage is largely purpose elicitation refinement. And the second and third stages are after the recommendations have been made, largely dominated by inquiry critiquing and eventually comparison. Now I do note that uh, abandonment can happen at any stage. Uh, it didn't happen in our experiments because we had very cooperative users, but of course in practice, abandonment is a huge problem. Okay, now, now let's break down these, these statistics of experiment stage-wise. Um, now, if we look, we see that uh, there's a moderate amount of activity in stage one, uh, sort of fewer turns taken in stage two, uh, majority of turns in experiments were actually taken in stage three. Lots of questions, lots of critiquing, lots of interaction, lots of explanation. Now, if we look at who's doing more of the talking, we note that in stage one, the user, when they're giving their preferences, are doing more of the talking, but by stages two and three, the recommender is dominating the conversation in terms of number of words or tokens uttered. Okay, now we get to our workflow analysis, which is sort of one of the key aims of the paper. And we're looking at how uh, user responses lead to recommend, recommender responses and vice versa. And let's start with the user to recommender. We know the user, of course, in this stage, when they're, when they're just starting off, are providing a lot of preferences, right? That's not surprising. Um, now the system, though, is spending a lot of its time making requests, right, to refine those preferences, right? Uh, because all of those preferences are ambiguous and they're underspecific or overly specific, overly specific. For example, um, the user said, you said, or the, the recommender would say, you said chicken fingers, did you, did you just want the kid's menu, right? It's really critical to get the right level of specificity of a preference. Chicken fingers is fairly restrictive. Kid's menu would be less restrictive, right? So the system is trying to relax the preference back to uh, a reasonable level that will fit more recommendations. Right. And you see a lot of this refinement going on with the recommender at this stage. Now, after the, once this personal elicitation stage quiesces, right, then we get our first, first recommendation, and that takes us to stage two. So now we have a recommendation, and now, um, and now we're going to actually look at the recommender, and we note that the recommender is doing 
is spending most of his time explaining that recommendation. And what's interesting is those explanations lead the user to provide further preferences, to make further inquiries about properties of the recommended restaurant, or to critique the restaurant based on things that they don't like. Right. So the explanation is really driving the conversation here. Um, furthermore, we did notice that the user makes a lot of inquiries in the stage. And we noticed that actually uh, inquiries or inf inf information requests were often serving as implicit preferences, right? At least half the time, the recommender responded to a question uh, and treated it as a preference for a future recommendation, right? So for example, the user says, does it have parking? Is it quiet? And the system actually interprets that as a preference to be used in a future recommendation. Okay, this is after the first recommendation. After we make the second recommendation, right now we're in stage three, and now there's inquiry critiquing, and now we can actually compare uh, the first and second uh, recommendations. Um, again, we still see uh, explanation driving the conversation. Uh, we see the user spending a lot of time focusing on inquiry, right? So the user is trying to verify uh, a satisfactory restaurant. Add, add, add attributes. Does it have parking? Is it, you know, is it, uh, does it have a nice atmosphere, ambiance, et cetera? Right? That's the inquiry. And the recommender spends most of the time explaining. And most of the explanation is trying to justify the item, especially with respect to things that the system thinks the user uh, is uncertain about in terms of the user preference. For example, uh, the user may have said uh, they want a private room. The system will say, well, they don't, they don't have a private room, but they have. Um, open space separated from others, right? Is that okay? So a lot of the explanation here is focused on sort of exploring uh, the, uh, the, the user preferences and whether this, uh, this item satisfies the preferences. Okay, judicial op observations. If we look at hard constraints versus soft preferences, we note that stage one was dominated by hard constraints, right? During the preference elicitation stage or stages two and three, when the user uttered preferences, they were often, or a slight majority of the time, they were soft preferences as opposed to hard constraints. Uh, secondly, we noticed that when the second recommendation was made, half the time the user requested it and half the time the system decided based on the feedback they're critiquing that uh, it should make the recommendation. So we saw a nice mixed initiative between the user and the system and the, rec and the, rec the recommender. Okay, so what are the key, key, key take-home points here? Um, right, in a natural rec rec recommendation conversation, we saw this sort of very clear workflow, starting with preference, preference elicitation, uh, moving to uh, inquiry critiquing, and finally inquiry critiquing and comparison with just a lot of explan explanatory justification. Uh, user preferences are highly ambiguous, right? And so there's a substantial effort throughout the conversation to clarify those preferences. And we're not the first to realize this, but we sort of reflect, uh, we reflect observations of others here um, that preference clarification is a huge part of the conversation. Uh, we saw a nice mixed, initi mixed in initiative, and it really is uh, important for the autonomous system to decide when to take initiative versus when to let the user take initiative. Uh, we saw that user questions often serve as implicit preferences. Um, you know, uh, uh, is it quiet? Does it have parking? Right. And that was actually quite interesting to see. Uh, and finally, uh, quite critically, explanation seems to drive a substantial fraction of the interaction. Right. So often the explanations were personalized based on user preferences, right? And even uh, reviewer experience uh, mined from the reviews that the user had access to, or the, 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 the recommender. Uh, but probably more importantly, the explanations are often, often exploratory, right? To verify that compromises the system made were acceptable, and furthermore, to evoke critiques about things that the uh, recommender may have been uncertain about, right? So explanations are really serving an exploratory role here, something that we uh, hadn't anticipated before we started. Okay, well, that completes my presentation. Uh, I'd like to thank you for listening. Uh, if you are interested in this research, um, I would invite you to uh, join or potentially visit my group. Uh, please contact me via email if that interests you. And uh, even though this is not a live talk, we will be having a question session afterwards. Thank you.